so let's learn of a few types of matrices right so let's learn the definitions of a few types special types of matrices and the names that are associated with them for some of these matrices we will be able to understand their geometric interpretation now for the other types of matrices we will learn of their geometrical interpretation little later as we progress through the course right the first thing the first concept is called as a row matrix the first terminology or the name is called as a row matrix and column matrix right so we have already seen this these are called row matrices and column matrices they are also referred to as row vectors and column vectors what they mean here is if you have a vector right which has n rows but only one column okay if it has only one column it is said to be a column matrix or a column vector right similarly if you have a vector or if you have a matrix which has only one row but multiple columns this is said to be a row matrix or a column matrix right so we have seen that row matrix and column matrix are concepts that we use in the concept of dot product right so we use we use the concept of a because by default every vector by default every vector if if it's not clearly stated if somebody says a is a vector by default it is represented as a column vector or a column matrix by default unless otherwise stated a vector or a matrix is not going to be a row matrix or a row vector okay so this is important and the simplest way to visualize this is a column vector basically has one column of data it has one column of data while a row vector has one row of data or one row of coordinate values that's the simplest way to think about it right so the second concept the second concept is the concept of a square matrix right we have already encountered square matrices right so a square matrix is a matrix a see a matrix a can have n rows and m columns if n is equal to m it is said to be a square matrix for example the rotation matrix that we have seen earlier in linear transformations the shear the shear matrix that we have seen little earlier when we interpreted matrix to vector multiplication as a linear transformation right so these are all so if you if you recall so we saw rotation to be a 2 cross 2 matrix similarly we saw shear that we we realized that shear can be applied using a 2 cross 2 matrix so if the number of rows and columns is the same it is said to be a square matrix okay again we have already encountered square matrices when we have seen rotation matrix and shear matrix etc okay so the next concept is called as a symmetric matrix okay the next concept is called as a symmetric matrix again remember that i am just defining a bunch of terms here we will look at some of the properties of these matrices little later after we learn some more operations on matrices okay so what what is a square what is a symmetric matrix first of all a symmetric matrix is a square matrix okay a symmetric matrix is a square matrix and a symmetric matrix has this property that a is equal to a transpose okay so it's a square matrix which also satisfies this condition that the transpose of the matrix is itself the geometric interpretation of symmetric matrices you can only understand them after we learn of a concept called as eigen values and eigen vectors little later in this course okay the best geometric interpretation or the or the very neat geometric interpretation of symmetric matrices come from the geometric interpretation of eigen values and vectors that we'll learn later okay that's why i said i'll not be able to give geometric interpretation of every concept here but let's understand the definitions okay if a equals to a transpose that means every cell a i j so the value of the matrix a in i throw and j th column is same as the value that is there in j th column and i throw or sorry in j throw and i th column okay a simple example of this is like this okay let's look at this 1 7 3 look at this so i have 7 here so this also should be 7 see this is 1 7 3 so this should also be 1 7 3 okay now i have 7 4 5 here because this is 7 4 5 this also has to be 7 4 5 okay i can have any value here so now if you look at a matrix this is a 3 cross 3 matrix right this is a square matrix because this has 3 rows and 3 columns and a equals to a transpose you can verify this by the way the simplest way to think about it is look at this this value is same as this value and this value is same as this value and this value is same as this value now these three values these three values are called 
these three values are, are called the diagonal. This is called the diagonal of the matrix. Okay, so this is called the diagonal of the matrix or it's often referred as a principal diagonal of the matrix, right? So these three elements together constitute the diagonal of the matrix. Okay, so this is what a symmetric matrix is. Okay, again, we are just defining a bunch of terms here. Now there is a next term called as skew symmetric matrix. Okay, there is an there is a there is there is an other concept called as a skew symmetric matrix. Now what is a skew symmetric matrix? Again, very simple. It's a square matrix, right? It's a square matrix. Skew symmetric matrix is a square matrix wherein a transpose equals to minus of a. Look at this. What is symmetric matrix? Symmetric matrix is a equals to a transpose. A skew symmetric matrix is a square matrix where a transpose is the negative of a. Okay. Again, we are just learning some definitions here. Let's go with the flow. Then there is something called as a diagonal matrix. Okay. So then there is something called as a diagonal matrix. And there are two types of diagonal matrices. The first is called a square diagonal matrix. Right. So in a diagonal matrix, what happens is this. Let me just draw a simple example, right? In a diagonal matrix, so the, all the values on the principal diagonal are non-zero. Everything else is zero. Everything else is zero. This is called as a square diagonal matrix. There is something called as a rectangular diagonal matrix or a non-square diagonal matrix. Okay, remember that this is a square matrix. This is a three cross three matrix. I can also have a non-square matrix like this, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0. If you notice, this is a 2 cross 3 matrix and this is not a square matrix, but this is a rectangular diagonal matrix because, again, another way to define a diagonal matrix, a more rigorous way is to say, Aij equals to 0, if this is your matrix A, Aij is 0, if I is not equal to J, right, if I is not equal to J, look at this. This is, this is first row, first column. Okay, that's why, see, except first row, first column, second row, second column, everything else is zero. So, it satisfies this definition and hence, this is a rectangular diagonal matrix. Okay, so again, there is a very simple interpretation of diagonal matrices. If this is, if, this, if I, think about it, right, if I have a square diagonal matrix, if I multiply this with another three-dimensional vector, imagine I have a three-dimensional vector here, right? with three coordinates x, y, z. When I multiply it, what happens now? There is, there is a very simple geometric interpretation of a diagonal square matrix. When I multiply this or when I apply this transformation represented by this diagonal matrix, what happens here is my x coordinate is going to get multiplied by 1 or it's going to get stretched by 1. My y coordinate is stretched by a factor of 2. My z coordinate is stretched by a factor of 3. Okay, so what I get here is 1x, 2y and 3z. So if you notice, if this is my vector v and this is my vector u, vector v and vector u, the only difference between these two vectors is, if vector v is like this, right, vector u also will be in the same direction, right, except that its magnitude is going to be more. Because I am able to represent vector u, look at this, okay. So this is, this is a very, very, oh sorry, sorry. Uh, this this will not be like this. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. Okay, so it's it's not going to be parallel because if you look at these two again, that's my mistake. Sorry, because I can't represent u as some constant times v. I can't do that. Okay, look at this. My u if it's if my v is x y z, right? X is getting multiplied by one. Y is getting multiplied by two. Z is getting multiplied by three. So u is not equal to c v. Hence, v and u will not be like this. My mistake. Sorry. Okay, but the important aspect here is what is happening here. Let's let's understand what's happening internally. What's happening internally when I when I do this multiplication here is that this x-axis is getting stretched by one unit, my y-axis is getting stretched by two units, my z-axis is getting stretched by three units. Okay, there is no rotation that's happening. It's only a stretching that is happening when I multiply with a diagonal matrix. Or in other words, this diagonal matrix simply scales or stretches. Okay, it simply scales or stretches each of the coordinates that I have by the values that you have here. Okay, very simple concept. Next, let's learn of a different concept called as the identity matrix. Okay, there is a there is a similar concept called an identity matrix. 
by the way an identity matrix is also referred to as a unit matrix right an identity matrix is a square matrix okay so let's write a simple simple example of an identity matrix right you have a simple identity matrix like this which has which has three rows and three columns because it has to be a square matrix all the non diagonal elements are zero and all the diagonal elements are equal to 1 so the definition of an identity matrix here is a i j equals to 1 if i equals to j and it's equal to 0 if i is not equal to j okay and of course it's a square matrix to start with right so unit matrices so this is often represented as i 3 cross 3 so this capital i is used to represent an identity matrix sometimes this is also written as just i3 because we anyway know that it's a square matrix to start with a very simple and elegant property of identity matrices is identity matrix multiplied by any other matrix is the matrix itself again we'll see other properties of identity matrix when we learn what is called the inverse of a matrix a little later okay so this is a very very simple property of the identity of matrix okay similarly there is a related concept called as a scalar matrix okay there is a similar concept called as a scalar matrix a scalar matrix looks like this right imagine i have a value lambda which is a scalar okay so this is a 3 cross 3 matrix where all the non diagonal elements are zero look at this all the non diagonal elements are zero and all the diagonal elements are equal to same value or the same scalar which is lambda so in other words i can write this as lambda multiplied by i3 because what is i3 what is i3 i3 is nothing but 1 1 1 rest everything zeros right this is i3 right so if i multiply i3 with a lambda what i get is a scalar matrix of size 3 by 3 with all the diagonal elements being the same value of lambda so this is the concept of a scalar matrix okay so there are two other there are a couple okay since we are at it there is also something called as a zero matrix okay there is a related concept called as a zero matrix what is a zero matrix as the name suggests if all the cells if all these values are zero okay if all of them again it need not be square it could be rectangular also if all of them are zero it's called a zero matrix and a zero matrix a zero matrix multiplied by any other matrix is a zero matrix right as long as this multiplication is valid right so a zero matrix multiplied by any other matrix is a zero matrix there are two other concepts the two other definitions that we'll learn right now and these are called as upper triangular matrix these are called as upper triangular matrix and lower triangular matrix again we will understand about them later in the course when we use these things in the real world right an upper triangular matrix is very simple let's take a simple example of a 3 cross 3 matrix okay an upper triangular matrix will have so let's say this is a 3 cross 3 matrix right so you take all the diagonal elements sorry you take all the diagonal elements you take this element you take the diagonal elements and the all the elements which are above the diagonal or which are in the upper triangular region so this is the upper triangular region right the upper triangular matrix says that every element that is not in the upper triangular matrix is zero okay so if everything that is not in the upper triangular part is zero it is said to be an upper triangular matrix similarly very similarly there is something called as a lower triangular matrix okay i'm just writing it in short form as lower triangular matrix again a very similar concept let's assume i have a 3 cross 3 matrix right let's assume i have a 3 cross 3 matrix here what is a lower triangular matrix now if all the see this is my diagonal these are all the elements that are below or lower than my diagonal right so if all the elements that are not in my lower triangular matrix if they are zero right all the all these non lower triangular elements are zero then it is said to be a lower triangular matrix because you will only be able to find non zero values in this lower triangular matrix again we'll see where upper triangular matrices and lower triangular matrices are used sometimes people often write upper triangular matrices matrix as u lower triangular matrices are often represented as l again we'll see again this is not a standard practice that you can use any variable name to represent an upper triangular and a lower triangular matrix okay so i hope you got a sense of various types 
and the names associated with various types of matrices. Again, it's impossible to explain the geometric intuition for everything. For example, we have seen a very simple geometric intuition for diagonal matrix, right? In the fact that it stretches or it scales the x, y and z axis based on the values that are there in the principal diagonal. So, it's not always possible to see a similar representation without learning some more concepts and some more properties. Again, for each of these matrices, there are a bunch of interesting properties that we will learn as we progress through this course.